beast, didn't they? Chuff to bits. The smallest little thorn back there. I'm just concentrate on not leaving the rod over the side. And his eyes. He's got amazing eyes. Doggy in the boot. Covered him, man. There's a bit of weight to that, you know. And that's what we want, don't we? We don't want the same same all the time. We want something different, a good old show. Hello and welcome to the channel. <laughs> Baits have been down for a few minutes. I managed to feather some mackerel on the way out and this had a whole dead mackerel, but it was fresh. It was, it was an hour old and it's a male undulate. Look at him. He's absolutely bristling. Keeps trying to get me with his tail. I've only got flip flops on. <laughs> I'm nuts and I, I'm sweating my conkers off. I'm gonna get this fish back. Just have a quick close up on that. Look at that. <laughs> he pulled back. <laughs> I wound into him and he wound off. <laughs> I'm gonna keep him wet. I've got a nice wet cloth. Just sort him out. Put a nice cloth over him because I don't think he likes the sunlight on his eyes. I don't think any fish likes that. Um, I'm gonna get him back in the water and I'll give you a show. Let's get this handsome devil back in the water. Try not to get spiked. Try to support him. He's a lovely creature, look at that. What an absolute stunner. Let's get some air in there. Oh, sorry, some, some air. This air he doesn't want, his water he wants. Oh, he's gonna go under the boat. And away he goes. What a stunner. So on the way out, I tried all the usual places, couldn't find any mackerel. And then it came good and I got into some. Um, got into some mackerel, got some in the cool box, all nicely chilled down and then I thought right let's start how we mean to carry on and I put that was a whole decent sized mackerel and look at the mess he's made of that he's proper sat on that and just chomped away at it but it's good stuff so I'm running a longer hook snood today closer to six feet rather than four feet I'm using the Solent rig, running ledger. I've got wire traces on board. So um, if I start getting bitten off and there are tope around, I have got wire traces to swap onto. So I've fallen foul of that in the past and not had them on the board, on board the boat. Better to have them and not need them than need them and not have them. So that's all gonna go in. Something's gonna get a free meal out of that. And so I don't run out of mackerel too quick, I'm gonna put a fillet on that next. You know what it's like, I've had to put suntan uh, cream on because the, the actual sun is blazing today. I've got the sun in my face, which means you haven't got it in the camera. Absolutely blazing. Um, oh. I think I'm getting bream bites. So I've put octopus hooks out with strips of um, squid. But I'm gonna get the big rod out, fishing two rods, two hooks on that one. One hook on that one, no panel, no nothing. You can see the length of the hook snood. It's longer than my arm span, so it's about probably about six foot, I would have thought. Um, yeah, bait it up and get back out. What a cracking start. Literally minutes after dropping a bait. <laughs> and I love some rain. <laughs> oh, what's going on there? <laughs> what was going on there? Something's pulling. <clears throat> Oh, yeah. Let's see what we got here. Oh, we got some bit of weight. And this is on a size four octopus hook and a small strip of squid. And when I say a small strip, I cut them into ringlets, cut the ringlet, and that's my strip. I find it's an easier way to cut the, cut the squid. Uh, nothing going on now, so I reckon it might be our friend, the dogger. Yeah. <laughs> He's a first dogfish. <laughs> oh, here we go. Dogfish uh, coming to the slack of the tide. Get me a uh, T bar. Oh, leave my hook in there because it's the safest place for it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Give you a quick look. He's only a small doggy. Doggy in the boot. <laughs> and get that unhooked. Easy. Away you go, Bob. Back to your mates. Mm -mm. Yeah, so there we go. One ray, one dogfish. 
but he loves a ray. Um, he's put me in a bit of a tangle there. He's given me a right old little kick in. So all I'm doing, it is still a running ledger, but I've just got a dropper. Single hook octopus, size four, little strip of squid. They're like piranhas, these little black bream, aren't they? You know what they're like. They just literally just chomp and chew through everything. Little bait thieves, really. But if I can get a decent one, I love them for the barbecue, but I don't mind eating one. Chuck all the rest back. But if there's one or two to be had of nice barbecue in size, they make a nice, nice barbecue thing they do. And I just bought myself a new barbecue, treat myself. We had the old one, I looked at it and I thought, do we clean it up, do we do this, do we do that? No, I went and bought myself, saved up my, saved up my pocket money. I went and bought myself a new one. So I'm looking forward to maybe catching something that means I can put it on the barbecue. What an absolute cracking start. I couldn't have asked for anything better than that. I've, I haven't got the big rod in the water at the moment. I need to sort that out. I'm gonna get keep keeping the bait in the cool box because it is um it is scorchio today. Probably gonna be one of the hottest days of the year today. It's flat calm, not quite mirror calm. Mirror calm is when you've literally got nothing. Uh, it's flat calm, no swell, nice high pressure. The big danger today is getting sunburnt. So I've got my factor 50 on. Factor 50, let's get this baited up. Keep your cool box closed as much as possible. Literally, open it, take out what you need, close it again. And because this is so fresh, the amount of blood that's coming out of this is impressive. But let's have a look. So I want to go in that way, get a good hook hold, and back out and stitch it down a couple, maybe one more. Through and back out. I like to come, always come out on the skin side. That gives you the bit so your hook doesn't get masked by the flesh. And I think I will put just the tiniest bit of elastic on that to stop it sliding down. Oh, we've got some waves incoming. Incoming! Mm. My little bag. Get, there. get off my fingers. Mm. All right. Just on that tiny little bit at the top, and the colours in this, it's still very electric green, very much electric green and uh, electric blue. You can tell how fresh that is. And that may look like a big bait, I'm not mucking about. Go big or go home. <laughs> Let's get that the rest of that mackerel back in the cool box, keep it fresh. It will spoil really quickly. If we're not careful, we'll get it back in there. Excuse the shot of my butt. You have to have a clean up after that fish just made everything soaking wet. I don't want to go slipping up. Let's get this down before it spoils. Out in the sun, it will spoil really quick. So I'm only fishing nine ounce weight, six foot of. Oh, there's something on there, look. And get that in. And a nice, slow, controlled lower down. That's a cracking bait. Summit is Summit is going to absolutely think all its birthdays come at once. I'm getting loads of bite. That's a good bream bite, I think. Just hope all that bait on this one doesn't just get me a doggy. All right, we're on the bottom. Set my drag. You know, I always go on about it, but always. Set your drag, you never know what you're going to catch. And we're fishing. I've got my Factor 50. I'm not going to show you the brand, but I don't know about colours and things, but Factor 50. Oh, aeroplane. All right, put that out of the way, somewhere safe. If it's close by, then I'll remember to keep putting it on. Get the whole mackerel fillet rods going, crackers. But that's not good. It's too aggressive, too too thingy for me, I think. I think that might be something small nicking my bait. 
Let's have a wind into it, see what it feels like. Yeah, this is something Steve robbing my bait. Bait thieves. <laughs> Little bait thieves. What is it? Have they stripped it? No, it's still on there. It's a bit of a mess. And I'll put it back down. Get some more benefit out of it. Yeah, so needles. This is where we are. Right in the bay. Just um, let me think. East, east of the needles, mainland's that way. Um, open channels that way. So we're out facing out to open water. We're not in the Solent today. And I'm hoping that that'll encourage something big to come along. I've got to be a bit frugal with my mackerel. I, you know, I don't want to just burn it all straight away because I've got some, very nice and fresh, but I haven't got loads. I've got the mackerel rods with the feathers ready and I've got the sounder on. I'm just looking out in case there's a cloud comes through, a bait cloud, and then I'll feather for some mackerel. I might just feather for mackerel just in case I can pick up the odd stragglers. Sometimes you do manage to find the odd stragglers. But yeah. Be nice to put a live mackerel down. Oh, something's going for that one again. Picky, picky, picky. Everything's just picking. Nice, nice undulate though. Chopped a bit. <laughs> I just picked this rod up. And considering I've only got a five ounce weight, there's something on the end of that. <laughs> this is my little tiny squid strips on the four size four hooks. And I get the funny feeling it might be a doggy. Mm. Oh. Something's just gone for that one, quite aggressively. What have we got here? What have we got? Yeah, he's a doggy. I don't want any doggies in the boat. We just unhook him. T-bar him off at the side. Very small doggies, these ones, actually, in the whole scheme of things. At least with the tiny hooks, they hook up nice, as in they're easy to unhook. Um, it's not really what I want though. <laughs> we don't want doggies. Must be on the flight path for Southampton Airport at this point in the Isle of Wight. They must aim for the needles, I suppose, because a lot of planes coming over. With COVID and all the rest of it, I'm not used to seeing planes, to be honest. Oh, little bite jab jab on that one. It's all little jab jabs, we want big pull pulls. <laughs> we don't want little jab jabs. We want big fish, big fish. Everything I'm touching is getting to covered in suntan, suntan lotion. I've got to wash my hands, but they're still slippery. Um, yeah. Lovely to see so many people out enjoying boats. Really is. Like it. People enjoying their fishing, rods jangling, albeit small fish. Um, yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Out and about. Dream of it all winter. Got to make the most of it when the time's here. Oh. And by that, I don't mean pulling sickies just because the weather's nice. British industry must march on. But what looked like a little pick pick on this rod, it's got a bit of a weight to it. Now, I don't think that's a doggy, to be honest. And you know what it's like, can't call it, but that don't feel like a doggy. This rod doesn't bend that easy. There's no fight to it. We all love to see it when you see the colour, don't we? And see what comes up. Oh, he's another doggy! <laughs> oh, and my other rig. That's why it's so heavy. I've just picked up my other rig. That's not good. Just give us a chance, buddy. Give us a chance, I'll sort you out. T-bar, doggy. Come on. Here we go. Don't bite it. There we are. 
you bite it, can't do anything about it, can we? So what's the guessing then? Doggy? <laughs> it doesn't feel like a bream. Oh, shit roll. Mm -mm. Whatever it is, it's not putting up any kind of a fight. It's just weight. What have we got? Yeah, he's a doggy. <laughs> <laughs> doggy, doggy, doggy. Wait, wait, wait. Come. Mm. Tiny, tiny little slivers of uh, squid on there. You wouldn't think they'd be interested in that, but they are. I'm hoping this is a bream because I just had a right old jangle, but it doesn't feel like a bream. Tide's just starting to starting to turn, so the boat's starting to swing round now. So I'm having a few issues with the lines, and now they're tangling and stuff. But I don't know what this is. I hope it's not another doggy. What have we got? It looks like a doggy. <laughs> it's a doggy. They love these little tiny bits of squid. There's literally nothing on these hooks. There's just the faintest little little morsel. They love these little baits. But these also are tiny little doggies. Here's my mackerel rod. As soon as we settle down, I'm gonna uh I'm going to put that out and just have it lazy over the side, 45 degrees from the boat, just fishing itself as the boat bobs around, the, the little sabikis will move around, see if we can pick some up, add to the bait stocks. We've got some interest here, this is on a big chunk of mackerel, oh yeah, that's got some weight, that feels possibly like a ray. Oh yeah, he's got some size. I was just starting to wonder why I hadn't had anything on this rod because it was a it was a stunning bait that I put out. It was just a big chunk that had a few slash marks in it, and I thought at least it was going to get picked clean by something smaller. Look at a bend in the rod. Oh, and I'm getting a bite on the other rod. So just as the tide's picking up, we know what happens, don't we? That's when it all comes alive. Oh, just, check. just check we are recording, because that, be that can be the mistake of the day, can't it? Into something really good. I don't know what this is, though. I've got, I've got my money on another angelate, you know? I just hope I haven't picked up my other line there. Because both rods seem to be going. And maybe that's that's where some of this weight's come from. Oh, oh, oh what have we got? I've got colour. Let's have a look. Yes. What a stunner. What have we got here? It's another undulate. It's a beauty as well. What a pretty fish. Oh, easy, 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 easy. Right, let's get a wet cloth. Get them covered over while I sort this out. What I have found, rather than put them in a bucket of water, as long as the deck's wet, because the deck's going to be hot, because it's summer, I quickly soak that big cloth that I've got, and I just lay it on top of them. I lay it on top of them, and it has two effects. It quietens them down, gives me a chance to sort myself out. You can see them huffing and puffing. Hear him huffing and puffing, rather. Let's get this hook out. It's hopefully nicely hooked. 
So we had a male earlier. This is a female. Cool. Listen to those teeth. Can you hear that? You do not want your fingers anywhere near that. Okay, okay, okay. Quick show for the camera and then we'll get this girl back. What a stunner. Lively one, this one. Whew. Absolutely stunning. Supporting in the best way I can. What an absolute cracker. Two. Now I'm not sure if that's a thornback or an undulate because sometimes the colourings, I'm not going to call it, but look at the look at the thorns on that tail. It's got to be a thornback, isn't it? But it's got undulate type colourings. And funnily enough, sometimes you see these and they've got a thorn right on their nose. And then sometimes they haven't. Oh, let's just put this cut the cloth back over. Just so she doesn't. Because the sun's very bright today. And it's not good for them. It's not good for them when the sun's this bright. I'm going to get her back in. Look at that, just swimming in the tide. Just gathering its thoughts. It's swimming back towards the boat. <laughs> it's just crossing over the back. Look, it's just holding station in the tide. That is amazing. Look at that, you can see the shape of it. About six to eight feet down and it's just thinning enough to hold the tide. And there it goes. Magical. Whew. Right, I know what everyone's going to say. Mark, where's your life jacket? Life jacket's on the back of my seat. Just as that rod went, I was going to take this off and put a t-shirt on. And just as I was going through all my stuff, I realised I didn't have my t-shirt. So I had to put this back on and I was just about to put my life jacket back on. So I'm gonna put my life jacket back on now. <laughs> well, that certainly went well. One male, one female. Well, I think the first one was an undulate, definitely. Second one had undulate kind of markings, but that might have been a thorn back, you know. I'm no expert, you know, I'm not. You know, I'm just a keen amateur like everyone else, but sometimes it throws you because the markings on them, you're like, is it, isn't it? They've all got thorns. <laughs> Just because the thorn back says it's got thorns. They've all got thorns. Um, right, bait up and get back out. That's livened me up a bit. It's been a bit quiet up till now. Struggling a bit. Right, before we go any further, do as I say. Oh. Yeah, I'm just gonna change this for a T-shirt and then realised I didn't have my t-shirt. Um, squid on that one, macro on this one. That's what the plan is. That's what I'm gonna go. And have a bit of a tidy up because the boat's all a bit of a mess at the moment. I'll sort this out, get it in the water, get it fishing. I'll get back to you in a bit. So I think that's me now. I'm just gonna tidy up, pack my gear away. boat all squared away, get it back out on the trailer, give it a wash down, all nice and nicey, barbecue and beer, I think, make the most of this weather, it is stunning, absolutely stunning. If you're wondering why I haven't got my sunglasses on anymore, it's because I haven't got my sunglasses anymore. I was having a tussle with a dogfish, one that didn't want to be unhooked, and they went over the side. <laughs> And I didn't know I couldn't get hold of them in time. They just sunk away in the clear water and you're just like, ah. Oh. And then my prescription driving sunglasses. I like to wear like polarized, yeah? So I use them on the boat as well. So quite important to me really. And they're down in the briny deep somewhere. Don't mean to, um, pollute the sea but 
they've got my sunglasses. So I'm having to make do with my come in handy emergency ones. Um, that's me, all done. Tidying up. I hope you've enjoyed watching the uh, couple of rays that I've caught. I didn't film the mackerel feathering. Um, and I didn't film all of the dogfish. The dogfish have been an absolute plague. Plague proportions. I don't know. 30, 40, something like that. So, no filming the dogfish. A couple of rays. I'm a happy boy. You know I love the ray. Absolutely loves the ray. I'm going to check closely on the footage. I'm pretty sure that first one was a male undulate and the second one was a female thornback. Um, but that's some very strange markings. And it's the markings that throw you off really, isn't it, sometimes? So that's me. Tight lines and happy fishing. I hope to spend time with you again sometime soon. From me, from now, from here, the needles. <laughs> it's goodbye. Take care and I'll see you soon.